My name is Jamel Rowe, and I will be conducting a professional development workshop today on motivating students in the classroom. Okay? So, everyone has a copy of my lesson plan. Alright, and it's on this white sheet of paper, and it's highlighted, has a big yellow highlight mark on it. So, this is a science lesson plan that deals with weather. The topic is actually hurricanes. All right, and so on this lesson plan, we have our next generation science standards. Our behavioral objective is to, is that students will be able to explain the elements of a hurricane by creating their own hurricane and applying what they've learned about hurricanes, okay? Now the focus of this workshop is not necessarily on my entire lesson, but more so on how we're gonna motivate our students to wanna learn about hurricanes. All right, Brian, can we advance the slide? So what is motivation? Anybody, can anybody in the audience tell me what motivation is? Just in general, what do you know about the word motivation? So, uh, okay, Miss Shirley, give it to me. Something that makes you move. Something that makes you move, so it makes you want to do something. Anybody else? Candace? Engagement. Engagement, absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah, it is intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Okay, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So when he mentions intrinsic motivation, those are things that are on the inside that makes us want to do things, like our love and our passion for whatever it is. Extrinsic, extrinsic motivations is like a paycheck. I want to go and I'm going to get it. It's, it's on the outside of what I'm doing, and that's motivating me to do whatever. So by definition, it's something that causes a person to act in a certain way to do a certain thing on the senses. Okay? That is the standard definition right on out of our dictionary, Webster, or wherever. Okay? I'm, okay. Why is it important to motivate students prior to teaching a lesson? I think we skipped the slide. You can just hit the arrow. Oh, okay. I apologize, everybody. Okay. Why is it important to motivate students prior to teaching a lesson? We want to be able, initially, we want to be able to increase the engagement level, right? We want them to be excited about what we're about to do. That's pretty much our whole purpose of including a motivation in our lesson plan. But then, but also, we want to increase the interest level in the, in the subject. We can also activate some prior knowledge. Being able to motivate them in the beginning of the lesson, we can draw on things that they may already know about hurricanes. They may not know it's called a hurricane, but they may know that rain is involved, high winds are involved. And these are the elements that create a hurricane, all right? We want to make some connections to what we're about to learn. We got to give them a little bit so that they can connect that 30 minutes later to what it is we're talking about. Um, and then also, just generally, we want to kind of activate the brain. You know, you can't just give them everything and they're just waking up, they just coming to school, they're still kind of maybe even had some crust in their eyes, they're yawning. We got to get the brain moving, okay? This is another reason why we do a motivation. So, Brian. Ways that we can motivate a student prior to a lesson. We can play games. We can have some hands-on activities. Students can watch videos that tie into what it is we're about to teach. Short stories. We have simulations, class discussions, just being able to see everyone's opinion about a topic or what they know. Students learn a lot from each other. So being able to have that general class discussion about anything will allow students to learn and feed off of each other's information and what they know. Uh, dramatizations, role play, make predictions. If a child doesn't know what a hurricane is, take a guess. What do you think it might be? Listen to what some of your peers are saying. Make a prediction and then we're going to see if you're right. You know? So these are some ways that we can motivate a student prior to a lesson. So we're going to give it a try, all right? 
So again, we're going to go back to our lesson plan. And if you will note the area highlighted in yellow, the teacher is going to ask students to congregate around her working station. And this lesson plan, again, is written for um, a special education class. It's usually a lot smaller, where students could come up to the teacher's um, desk and do things like that. I actually have two different stations. Brian is my co-pilot today, and he's going to help me with this. So we're going to ask. Everyone to come on up. You know, if you need to stretch, you need to work your legs a little bit, you know, motivate you, get ready. Ms. Paul, that you're fine right here. Can you ever you actually find right there if you just kind of want to slide over? Uh, Professor Ellaby, we want to ask you to join us. Okay? And so what we're going to do actually is, for our motivation, I'm going to talk students through what some of the hurricane things are, the elements of a hurricane. So we're going to begin. Brian, you can go ahead to the next slide. All right, these are pictures of hurricanes. I want you guys to tell me what you see in these pictures. Kiara? Trees are blowing over. Trees are blowing over. Absolutely. What else do we see? Mark? It's, um, I think it's rainy or dusty. Raining. Foggy. Foggy, dusty. So it's not clear, right? We already know it's not it's not clear. What about over there? Can anybody give me some um, ideas about what's in the picture over here? Kiara? Like the water. Okay, so yes, we're in the water. As you can see, this part of looks like Florida right here or something, right? So we have we're in the ocean, and these are actually clouds that are beginning to form. Now it is that's when the fog and all of that stuff begins to play a part with the humidity and things like that. So you're absolutely right. We have some wind, we have some rain, we have some clouds. These are the things that help to form hurricanes. Okay. So a hurricane happens when low pressure moisture from the ocean mixes with high pressure of the humidity from the ocean. It begins to rise and the winds begins to create, helps to create the hurricanes. So that's what gives it that circular motion and things begin to rotate. It's the pressure from the ocean rises, mixes with the humidity and the air and the winds create the hurricane. All right? All right. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a simulation of a hurricane using a mixing bowl, food coloring, and a spoon. So each station already has water in a bowl, and I have the food coloring over here. No, it's over here, sorry. And so I need for one person from each group to be the stir. Who's gonna stir? Ms. Paulette, Ms. K, you wanna stir, okay? So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start that circular motion. And if you do not have a job already, you're going to be five. One, two, three, four, five, all right. So now we have enough pressure in there that we can get on our hurricane. Now I'm going to drop food coloring and we're going to watch, yes, keep okay. stirring, do not stop. And we're going to see what happens. Well, that just kind of. Keep stirring. Right in the middle, we should see the food coloring separate just like in a hurricane yeah, well, in the picture number one. Mm, All right, you saw it separate. It, it kind of disperses pretty fast. fast. So you have to kind of look like really, really quickly. You see it? Yeah, mm -hmm. very fast. One more time over here. All right, <laughs> so do we see any hurricane like structures? in our simulations? Yes. Yes. So is this something you guys are going to want to create on your own? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. You guys can really participate in the activity that has sparked their curiosity about hurricanes. They were able to do it, simulate it on their own. Um, again, this was the motivation, so I did it for them. Them seeing it with their eyes and being able to have that ooh, ah moment is enough for me to take them through my lesson and get them excited about making their own. Okay, so that's what having 
the motivation does for the lesson. It sparks that curiosity, it sparks that excitement so that students are ready to learn whatever they need to learn about hurricanes so they can get to the end and make the simulation and make their own hurricanes, okay? Um, oh, okay.